Hi everyone, my name's Karsten Kroening, and let's, let's talk about stuff. So, this is my fourth time recording this video. But as they say, these things take time. So today we are talking about Undercover by Jun Takahashi. And it is our second part in the fashion and punk series where we're analyzing these kind of punk, post-punk, um, all the punk genres and their relationship with fashion, mainly menswear. And we're diving in today with uh, Jun Takahashi. So, on Jun, um, he was born in Tokyo in 1969 and from there, he went on to attend the Bunka Fashion School, and as he was a young man, he was very influenced by punk music. He used it as an escapism kind of mechanism to uh, get away from the small town life in which he was born into, in the same way that white girls use Lana Del Rey to get away from their daddy issues. John loved uh, punk a lot. He was very passionate about it. He was in a Sex Pistols cover band called the Tokyo Sex Pistols. And it was just really extremely influential on his life and in his fashion style. And so when he started attending the Bunka Fashion School, which is very prestigious, um, he met the designer who would create vape known as Nigo. And those two opened a shop together called The Billy. And that is when Undercover really started, or when Jun talks about how it started. It just really started as a t-shirt and vintage brand, where um, Jun would kind of just in his pastime design a couple of t-shirts with some usually punk influences, and like he would reference bands like Nirvana, Jesus and the Mary Chain, uh, the Sex Pistols, just his favorite brands and his favorite bands, and just make um, t-shirts that are a homage to them that he would sell to people as well as he would buy vintage pieces and customize them with punk sayings, punk badges, kind of like studs and kind of give them the punk look. While he was at the uh, Bunka Fashion School, he met the head of Comme des Garçons, Ray Kaukubo, who kind of took him under his wing. And at the time, he wasn't designing couture, he was pretty much just designing t-shirts and these little vintage pieces. And um, Kaukubo took him to a Margiela show, which changed his whole view on fashion, and he really got into it. And two of the most influential people, besides just the idea of punk in Jun's life, are Kaukubo and Margiela. So for his first collection, he um, that was in Japan, uh, it was very small. It still wasn't really undercover, totally evolved but it did feature elements of these three people. Margiela with the kind of deconstructed elements a little bit to it. Um, Kaukubo, there was some dark drapery in the collection, as well as punk and like grunge movements in general as there was like tartan and other materials that are very well known and just very connected to punk fashion. And so he was really starting to combine all these things and um, Kaukubo of Comme des Garçons continued to be extremely um, supportive of uh, Jun's work. And she famously bought a bomber from the collection and helped him continue on. It wasn't until spring summer of 2003 that his connection with Kaukubo and his evolution in the fashion industry finally allowed him to have his first Paris runway show. The show was called Scab and the idea of every kind, most of the clothes kind of having like a scab-like feature as they had these patches that were overlaid and uh, the garments were reconstructed out of these like patches or scabs in a very Margiela way. But it also had this punk influence as it wasn't like Margiela where it's more artisanal, it's more about, with Margiela, like his deconstructedness is all about deconstructing the garments and kind of a humble way I'd say. It's not very, while it's very complex, it isn't very flashy, but with Jun, the way he deconstructed garments, uh, he did it in a more punkish kind of DIY 
cut up, destroyed like it had been through a mosh pit or something like that. And through his own style of kind of taking Margiela's um, deconstructed, like let's cut up some clothes and put them back together, as well as his punk roots, he kind of created Scab. And it's a great collection. A lot of the pieces are highly coveted today. That kind of scabbing technique that he used in it is really awesome. I would go check it out. It's really iconic and amazing. And there's also these traditional punk elements that are in it, such as studs, badges, uh, patches that are just kind of scattered about, and you can kind of see the punk aesthetic within it. However, there are no references to any music. Fall 2004 is the first time we really see um, an actual punk figure directly being referenced in Undercover, besides just on t-shirts or some standalone pieces. And um, the figure is Patti Smith, who is really the Mother Mary of uh, punk music, I would say. She's really the strong female figurehead at the forefront, and she was really inspiring to a lot of women in the punk scene. And um, she isn't traditionally punk with like the studs and stuff like that, but she very much has that attitude and spirit and really helped form and melt the music. And Jun pays homage to her as the whole collection is based off of her and her own personal style. Um, it's very similar um, to what uh, Virgil Abloh did with Princess Diana, as many of the looks are directly inspired by something that the woman actually wore. And it's a really cool collection. It kind of is, was not usual for Undercover at the time, as it's straight away from like the dark, kind of like angsty um, aesthetic that Undercover had had before and kind of gave off more of like a New York hipster hobo of the 60s and 70s. Um, just that kind of style of being an independent woman in those times was very much employed. Uh, think of the movie Annie Hall, some of the designs and the clothes look similar to that. Um, but they're all based off of Patti Smith looks. Much of her style just came from going to thrift stores and buying whatever she could. And it's a very cool way into playing into her own style and kind of giving off that look. And it's a great collection. When it comes to Undercover, the first and most iconic years of him showing in Paris, while they do have a lot of the punk aesthetic to it, there aren't a lot of actual punk references in Undercover besides the t-shirts. Jen has always been kind of just doing a diffusion of t-shirts that he sells at his Undercover stores and through boutiques that aren't part of the runway collections and therefore a lot of the t-shirts are just kind of standalones and they will have direct punk references to them but in terms of actual collections the early years didn't have a lot of actual punk references besides the aesthetic and so we're gonna skip over a lot of the really cool um, uh, iconic early years unfortunately um, I would recommend checking out Spring 2006, which was a really awesome, cool collection. It was all based on a progressive German rock band that actually didn't exist. It's very similar to what Yang Li did with Sam's Dad in making tour merch for a band that isn't real just because you want to make tour merch inspired clothing, which I think is really cool. But um, these early and very influential years where Undercover kind of gained its grounding in the early to mid 2000s, um, we don't see a lot of those references in there. And I do definitely want to make a video in the future talking about these years because they are very, very cool and very, very iconic. But I don't think we're going to talk about them. And instead, we're going to jump into the early 2010s. So the first collection that we are going to dive really into depth about with its punk references is um, Autumn Winter 09, I believe, um, Earmuff Maniac. And this collection was all inspired by Joy Division. So in the spirit of how Raph kind of took from Joy Division, there's a lot of black, monochromatic, kind of bleak, almost post-apocalyptic vibes with this collection that kind of reflect on Joy Division's depressing and just kind of dark and almost ambient sounding aesthetic. And um, Joan really reflects this with the clothes. There's a lot of black, 
um, it's kind of a depressing, kind of like a lot of the people look like they could come out of a post-apocalyptic world. And the thing about Joan is that he actually uses the actual Unknown Pleasures logo on many of the items in very cool ways. Um, for example, the Ethnic Rider um, leather jacket, which is extremely iconic. It's a very cool design. Um, he has, it has these black badges on them. Um, that are really cool as well as these sleeves which aren't actually leather and it has the unknown pleasures artwork on the inside as well as he created these really cool um, cloak almost blanket looking things that have the unknown pleasures artwork on them now about Jun using the unknown pleasures um, artwork is that he didn't have permission to use it and when Raph used this artwork, he actually went to the creator, Peter Seville, who has it trademarked, and he asked, could I use it? Can we do this collab? But Jun did not do this, and he said it was in the spirit of punk. And of course, then um, Peter Seville sued um, undercover, and that led to a cease and desist. So many of the items in this collection are pretty rare. Um, similar to what happened with the under, um, Rick Owens dunks. And it's very ironic that Peter Seville would send a cease and desist because the Joy Division Unknown Pleasures artwork isn't really created by him. Pretty much what happened was is that Ian Curtis, the lead singer of Joy Division, had this idea um, of a graphic that I believe he saw out of a medical book and it was the Unknown Pleasures artwork, but on white, uh, black on white, and then Peter Seville took it and inverted it to um, white on black. And so pretty much he just changed the colors and that was it. So it's kind of ironic, even though that Peter Seville didn't really make it, that um, he would sue someone else for using it. So that's maybe Joan's point, but. The next collection we're going to talk about is Spring Summer 2014, which is um, Jun's collaboration with Jesus and the Mary Chain. And out of all the collections I think that I've researched for Undercover, unfortunately this might be my least favorite. Um, I think some of the pieces are still really cool, but it always kind of leaves me wishing that there was more to this collection because I do like the Jesus and the Mary Chain very much, but um, there's just not a lot in this collection that gets me super excited. But I really do love the Jesus and the Mary Chain, so let's talk about them. They were a Scottish alternative post-punk band that were heavily inspired by the Velvet Underground, one of the very first punk bands that um, influenced much of the genre and like the Velvet Underground they were extremely experimental they were just so different from anything else going on in punk music that their sound very much inspired its own subgenre and they were heavily influencing the subgenre of shoegaze music that came out of the UK shortly after their time as a band and um, for Jun's collection with uh, the Jesus and the Mary Chain most of it is just black and red looks, even a black and red Kurt Cobain sweater, which I'm not sure how that fit, but black and red looks that kind of reflect on their aesthetic, as well as some of the lyrics to Just Like Honey, I believe, on some of the clothes and the Psycho Candy artwork on some of the shirts and jackets and etc. And as far as a collection, you can't really dive too deep into it, um, Jesus and the Mary Chain, sure they're dark sounding, sure their main color motifs are black and red, but it's really just these graphics on these clothes and there's not a lot of stuff we can dive into with it if one of you guys would think that there's some deeper meaning with how Jun is putting these graphics on these clothes, feel free to comment, but I just don't think there's a lot to dive into. Love Undercover love Jesus and the Mary Chain, but unfortunately there's just not a whole lot going on with this collection. Now the very next year, um, Jun had another collab with another amazing band that was punk, and that was Spring Summer's 2015 Adventure. 
Um, it comes from the band Television, the uh, name of the collection, Adventure. It's named after their second album. And the whole collection is pretty much a collaboration with Television. And Television is a proto-punk band from New York who played at CBGB. And when I say proto-punk, that means pre-punk. So the first wave of punk with like the Ramones, the Sex Pistols, all the, um, the Clash, all those really popular punk bands. They were just a little bit before, they even often played with the Ramones before they blew up. But they never saw that big first wave of success. And um, television stands out from a lot of other punk bands as they're very um, flashy and flamboyant, not really in their style, they're pretty plain in their own personal style. But in their actual music, they're much more, they're less gritty and more complex and um, there's a lot of dueling guitars that go on in it. It's very um, different from how many of the punk bands at the time were just kind of bashing three chords together to try to get a riff. They were doing all these complex guitar solos as well as the um, lyrical style of Richard Hell is very different from much more of the gritty yelling and screaming that we know punk for. It's, it has these interesting linguistic vocal kind of up and downs in his voice. Um, very similar actually to Young Thug. Um, television, their vocal style is kind of like white, 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 very white Young Thug. Um, and just their kind of whole style was very flashy and just kind of out there compared to all the other punk bands in terms of their music and Joan really kind of reflects this with his collection I think in a very good way um, so instead of uh, for what he did with Jesus and the Mary Chain and put the graphics on the clothes in a very easy to do um, easy for a consumer to buy in that way he did something um, different where he put the actual album artwork in an all-over um, print on the jackets and the shirts and some of the jeans, which are, which are the jeans are really cool. Um, but he puts the graphics on the clothes in a way which isn't traditional. He makes it more um, flashy and out there and very much harder to wear and harder to adapt into your own wardrobe which is very much similar to television as they're a band that's not necessarily easy to listen to if you like um, what is the norm of punk music. They're very much different. They're kind of hard to fit into your discography because they're unlike a lot of bands. And I think that reflects well as these garments are extremely flashy, which is a big turnoff to a lot of people. But I think it just makes sense because television is so out there and flamboyant in their own right, much like this clothing. Um, the actual collection features these amazing bombers and parkas uh, with the Marky Moon album artwork all over it. The Marky Moon album cover was shot by Robert Maplethorpe, who also did the photography for Patti Smith, as well as kind of living with her and being a partner and friend of sorts with her. Kind of complicated, but um, he also did a lot of the photography for the punk scene out of CBGB at the time. And the actual way the photograph is taken, it's very saturated and colorful, which is very different from Maplethorpe's style and the whole style of traditional punk. And Joan compliments that as he just like goes all in with it pretty much. Uh, he holds back no punches and pretty much just gives you all the colors all the saturation, all the wacky craziness, and I think it's a very cool way to do it. And I think it really complements the band and who they were. I would recommend checking out Richard Lloyd's biography. Uh, everything is combustible, it gives a history of television, and they're one of the more fascinating bands you can read about because they were all just kind of really crazy and out there and doing way too many drugs 
but it's really fascinating how they wrote their songs and lived in New York at the time. And I would check out that book, Everything is Combustible. I bought it from Barnes & Noble. Best $15 I spent for a long time. So when it comes to Undercover, these are the main collections that are based off of actual um, bands. And I think there's a lot fewer than you think. But what you have to understand about Undercover is that Joan is doing so many side things and that he's not really focused on creating a homage to a band that much. And that's because the whole punk identity is so built into Undercover already, it isn't necessary for him to go out there and say, ooh, I really love this band so much, when it's already very obvious that he has this amazing love affair with the punk rock genre. And it's really cool that pretty much every iconic piece from Undercover has a lot of punk influence in it. And it's not necessarily that every piece from Undercover is like that. There are many grails which are amazing in their own rights, which have nothing to do with punk that we can see, but they have very much of that spirit and identity. And um, when it comes to Undercover, punk is like weaved into its identity. When it comes down to it, Undercover started as a little side project for a guy who just loved punk music and he wanted to create his own graphic tees for that. And I think that's really cool and it's awesome that that's the spirit of the brand. And it's just really cool to see how the brand has progressed and gone into other things besides punk while still keeping that spirit and energy to it. And um, with that, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Um, next week or next time, I don't know if it will be coming out next week, we hope, we're gonna be talking about Takahiro Miyashita's The Soloist and Number Nine, both together. It's gonna be really in depth, it's gonna be a lengthy video, um, but we're gonna have fun with it. And um, I would uh, please subscribe, like, share this video. I really appreciate it, it means a lot to me when you guys support me and this whole little project of mine. And uh, my Instagram is Meme Saint Laurent and my other Instagram is Carson Craning. Um, stay tuned guys, uh, I'll see you next time.